All right, you guys, Melody Cleone here with eXp Realty. Today, I'm going to talk about how to dominate your open house to get more listings. So the number one thing that you want to focus on is preparing for your open house. What are you going to do to prepare for your open house? The second thing that I'm going to talk about is what you do during your open house. And the third thing that I'm going to talk about is the post open house follow up. What do you do with all those leads once you finally get them in your database and in your CRM? So the number one thing that I did as an agent for starting out about nine years ago was I actually went ahead and as I'm signing the listing agreement with my sellers, I'm sitting there and I'm communicating with them on what I'm going to do to get their home sold for the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time. So it's all very, very easy. It's usually real estate agents just you know, it's all fluff. It's very easy to sell a home. It's not that difficult. It's not rocket science. The three things that agents normally do uh, to get a home sold is what? Clean it, hire a photographer to take some pictures, put it on the MLS, right? That's what all realtors do. Nothing special. Most agents are passive agents. They just stick a sign out on the front yard, throw a lockbox on the front door, and they just hope for it to sell. So what I want to express to sellers when I'm at the table before I even host the first open house is I'm telling them exactly what I'm going to do. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when I get your listing on the market, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set an open house. It's going to be on Saturday and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. What I'm going to do before the open house is I'm actually going to walk the entire neighborhood and I'm going to knock on 20 doors in either direction. So 20 doors across the street from the house, 20 doors to the left and 10, 20 doors to the right. And I'm going to invite all of the neighbors in your neighborhood to come to the open house. And I'm going to have them come to the twilight tour and invite them to come and help me, um, you know, pick out their neighbor. So once I do that, I'm also going to have handwritten note cards with flyers that I drop off to them. We're going to do a twilight tour, which is kind of an evening time tour. And I'm going to have all the neighbors in the community come out. Um, and then once I invite them, I'm going to call at least 200 top producers in my market. And I'm going to invite the top agents, if it's not 200, you know, 100 or even 50, it doesn't matter. Just reach out, be proactive and call all the agents and the brokers in the neighborhood and invite them to come and check out the open house, get in front of them, let them know that this listing is on the market and ask them if they have any buyers. Okay. Once you invite all the neighbors and all the agents and the brokers to the twilight tour to get a sneak peek of the home, then you're set up for your actual open house. So when I go on the market, there's a couple things that I make sure that I always have to market the property. First of all, you're going to need a flyer, an informational property flyer that has all the features and benefits of that home, all the upgrades, all the list of everything that's been upgraded in the, in the home. You want it all listed out on a beautiful colored flyer with your call to action on it. So you want your headshot, your phone number, your email address, and your DRE license number on it. And you want people to know how they can contact you, right? You don't want any black and white flyers. You want it to be either on thick cardstock or something really beautiful, um, colorful, and something that stands out. You're going to want business cards, okay? You're going to need one of those open house stands to put your flyers in. And you're also going to need your um, open house signs. So you want at least five to 10 open house signs, okay? Now we're on part two. This is what you do during the open house. You want to put five to 10 open house signs out. Why? Well, first of all, 
The best way to drive traffic to your open house is by blanketing the neighborhood with your open house signs, leading people, neighbors, people that are passing by, people that are running their errands on the way to the grocery store, taking their kids to the park or coming back from a play date. You want them to see that it's open because they might have missed it on Zillow or Redfin or whatever search engine that you had it syndicated to. So once you get your open house signs out there, if you don't have any yet, ask your office, ask another agent that you know how signs and borrow some, okay? Then what you want to do is I always went to the dollar store and I got some balloons and I just tied them around the top of the open house signs. You know, there's a handle where you can pick them up and move them around. So you just tie the ribbon of the balloon to the open house sign because it's always an extra little just piece of flair, just kind of an eye catcher, something floating around in the air and people are wondering, oh, what's going on? It's a party. Like, I want to stop by. So you want to grab people's attention, get on as and get in front of as many people as you possibly can. You're going to want an iPad or a sign in sheet. If you have an iPad, it's really easy, especially for EXP agents, because our CRM is called KV Core, state of the art CRM. Most agents outside of EXP pay thousands of dollars for it to use. EXP gets it as an added benefit of being with the broker. So we get it for free and it integrates with your CRM and an, uh, a sign in sheet. So if someone walks into the open house, they just sign in on the tablet and they, it registers their information right then and there, and it puts them right into your CRM. So you don't have to worry about having people's names, numbers, you know, email addresses all on paper, and you don't have to worry about losing that information or, oh God, where was Sally? Or, oh God, what was John's last name? No, none of that. All of that is already in your CRM waiting for you to follow up on Monday, okay? So once you have your open house signs, you've got your balloons, you've got your beautiful colored flyer with your call to action on it, some business cards and your iPad or a sign in sheet, because you can use a sign in sheet too, just old school pen and paper with a clipboard. And by the way, if people walk into the open house and they ask you, well, why do I have to sign in? I just want to take a look at the house really quick. Will you tell them? With my seller is asking that everyone that comes into the home, please sign in because they want to have a record of everyone that came into their home. I never get any objections because of that. So once you tell them that, they'll back off, they'll probably just sign in all good. And then um, that's, that's what you want to have for during the open house. Now, if you're going to go out and you're going to spend maybe $100 or $200 on date night during the weekend with your husband or your wife, then why would you not invest $20 to $30, maybe even $50 if you really want to get fancy on some waters and some muffin or coffee and, and some sandwiches or something to leave at the open house, right? Because people will most likely come if you feed them right? So I always have a box of cookies, some muffins, some water bottles, some sparkling water, something like that. So that people actually go, oh, wow, she's so hospitable. She's feeding us. She's giving us free cold waters. It's hot outside. Like, that's awesome. I, you're showing people what you would do in the neighborhood if it was your, if it was their home, excuse me, the different steps that you would take to market their home once it goes on the market, okay? So um, another thing is, is that you've touched the buyers and all of the, um, all of the uh, neighbors in the neighborhood. So you've invited them to the Twilight Tour. So that's one touch. The second touch is gonna be when you invite them to come to the open house. Hey, my name is Melody Cleone with eXp Realty. I'm sure you saw the sign go down. The coming soon sign just went down. Well, we're officially on the market now. We're going to have an open house on Sunday from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, would love to have you come by. Check out the home now that it's, you know, on the market and help me choose your neighbor. It's listed at 600,000 and it's a three bedroom, two bathroom. I uh, would just love to invite you to come on by, grab a cookie and uh, a water and just 
take a look at the house. The 100% be there, right? Because if their neighbor's house went on the market, they're nosy and they want to know how much their neighbor is going to potentially get from the house and where they went and what upgrades they did and all the different things that you're doing to market the home, right? So that's your second touch to the neighborhood. The third thing that you're going to do is while you're at the open house, you've, you've got your cookies, you've got your flyers, you've got your sign-in sheet, you've got your uh, open house signs out there. Well, one more thing that you want to do is you want to make sure all the lights are on in the property. All the toilet seats are down. There's no Windex bottles or Clorox wipes just sitting on the kitchen counter. There's no baby diapers, you know, all over the ground in the kids' room. You want to make sure that you get there an hour early before the open house, and you want to make sure that the house looks presentable to the public, and you want to make sure that it's in good condition for people to walk through and take a look at it, right? So once you've done that, open house time. So people are walking in your open house, right? You don't want to let anyone get past you in that open house without at least introducing yourself to them and talking to them at least one time. So you want to kind of slow them down. Hey, my name is Melody. This is my listing. Oh, the Marshalls. Yeah, I know. They just moved to Connecticut. Um, they had some family out there. They're retired now, you know, empty nesters. And so, um, yeah, I'm sure you've seen that, you know, we, they've been moving the last couple of weeks. And so what do you think of the house, you know? Oh, great. Yeah, I know. The, the floors look awesome. They did such a great job. Um, I actually sent my painter over here to paint the house for them. I know, right? It looks great. So who do you know that's thinking of buying and selling a home in the neighborhood? Pause. Wait for them to answer the question, right? So side note is in the real estate world, we all know that most agents are passive agents. Like I said in the beginning, it's all fluff. Most agents do the same things. They clean the house, get the photos done, put it on the MLS, wait for it to sell. Great. If you want to dominate your market and you want to be the top agent in that neighborhood that absolutely gets every single listing and that is top of mind with all the people that want to sell their home, future sellers, then you want to show them how you work. You want to show them how aggressive you are in getting the home sold. So here's my marketing campaign. Here's what I'm going to do to get your home sold, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. This is what we do during open houses. Um, and, and you also want to be able to sell that house to someone, but also to get leads in return. We all know that open houses don't sell the house. Open houses are for who? You, the realtor. Because most agents will go on the MLS, find the home, and then be able to show it to their buyers during the week on a private showing or any other time. The open house is not what sells the house. You are there so that you can get lead capture, so that you can get at least four to five solid listing leads or buyer leads at that open house because every single listing should generate at least four to five solid leads from it. Okay. So your sign is already out there in the front. You might as well leverage it by standing at the open house, come with high energy, come with a positive attitude, come from contribution, and you want to be the neighborhood realtor. So when people come in, you want to treat them like a friend. You want to greet them with a warm smile. You want to give them all the information that you can. And I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't give your painters information out up front. I wouldn't give all of your resources out up front because you want to keep that in your playbook for when you go on the listing appointment, right? So you don't want to give up all of your resources because that's what makes you different from the rest of the competition. So you want to keep something sacred, but you also want to be their friend. You want to be that neighborhood expert and show them how you rock those open houses, right? She's aggressive. She's going to get my home sold because I watched how she marketed and hosted the uh, open houses for the marshals, right? So that's wonderful. Once you get people to sign in, you know, end of open house, let's say you've got 30 names in your CRM. Great. Now this is the follow-up. 
The number one thing that you want to do is obviously follow up with all of those leads immediately. Okay. First of all, you want to make a list of all the people that have agents because they'll usually say, okay, so you don't want to follow up with any of those clients. You want to be respectful of all the other agents in the neighborhood and um, you don't want to touch any of their clients. So those people you probably will not follow up with. The people that you will follow up with are people that are in your CRM that are buyers without a realtor, right? And they'll usually tell you. So you'll follow up with them first thing Monday morning or later on in that weekend as soon as possible. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, this is Melody Cleone. I just wanted to thank you for coming to the open house this past weekend. Just wanted to get your feedback on what you thought of the property. Oh, and by the way, if this property was not the right fit for you, I have a team of 300 agents all across the Bay Area, and we have a lot of off-market and coming soon opportunities that I would love to show you if you're interested in seeing them. And they'll usually reply, you'll get at least, you know, a couple of replies out of that list of, you know, 30 people, or hopefully more than a couple of replies. And what you say to them is great. Well, how about this? How about we book a quick complimentary home buyer meeting? I want to sit down with you on Zoom. Should probably take anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. And I can talk to you about all of the different off-market opportunities and coming soon opportunities that my team has. Also, I want to give you my home buying guide for you to have as an informational guide while you walk through this process of buying your next home and getting through your next chapter. Who wouldn't want to book that call, right? Like you are providing nothing but value and information, value and information. Um, if I was me, I would get on that call. <laughs> So if, you know, if you do all of those things, then that should generate at least a couple of leads for you, which will lead to closed deals, which will make you more money, which is the goal of why we're going to the open house. There's been days that I have not been in the best of moods or it's raining outside and it's freezing and I just do not feel like rolling out of bed and going to host that open house. Well, a couple of things. Number one, those are the days that I make the most amount of money when I don't want to get out of bed and I end up thanking myself for getting out of bed and going. And number two is that this is your bread and butter. When you get an online lead, like a Zillow lead or a Redfin lead or a realtor.com lead, you're going to pay a what? A referral fee. Standard is between 25 and 35% referral fee that you're giving to that company just by sending you the lead. So that's a lot of money. And I don't know about you, but I'd like to keep that money in my pocket as much as possible. And the way that I'm going to do that and the way that you're going to do that is through sweat equity. Okay. Does not cost you anything more than some water bottles and some cookies to stand at an open house for free for a couple of hours on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. You can do both or one, you pick, just stand there for a couple of hours, put a smile on your face, dance around if you have to in the car on the way there, slap your you know music, whatever that is, and get yourself in a high energy state. Get yourself in a state where I'm gonna help someone today. I'm gonna help a family today get into their next home. I'm gonna help a fam family today net the most amount of money when they wanna sell their house and I want them to remember me. So make sure you put your game day face on and prepare yourself to come at your highest and best because these are free leads. They're just walking into the open house and they need help. They need information. They need someone to come up to them and give them something of value. So um, that's the next thing. For some of the, uh, um, the water bottles and the marketing, you can kind of get you know cute with it if you want. Um, it takes a little bit more time, but if you want to go that extra step, I've actually taken the Arrowhead label 
off of the water bottle and I've gotten my own labels to go around the water bottle with my name on it and my little picture, my email address, my phone number. And I've actually put that around the water bottle so that they're custom water bottles with my name on it so that when they get there, it just looks that much more presentable. And it's so, so, so cool as a marketing standpoint, because people are like, oh, wow, look at her. Like she's, she's got her name on a water bottle. Like that's awesome. You know what I mean? Like she's got, she's got great marketing. I hope she does that when she's going to sell our house. So anyways, a um, couple of things that you want to be aware of is make sure that you're following up with um, the city to know what the open house sign ordinance is. Your local real estate board will usually have a list of the different sign ordinances. Um, I've made that mistake out here in um, the San Ramon area of California, which tends to be a little bit more strict on their signs. And um, they'll just come up and swoop your open house signs and take them, throw them in the back of the truck and confiscate them if they're not in the right zoning of where they're where the open house signs are supposed to be. And they'll take them and they will not give them back. They will not surrender them to you. So um, that's anywhere between $150 to $250 for one open house sign, depending on the company that you go through. And they, they can be very costly to get redone. So make sure that you follow up with your local board regarding your open house um, ordinances. Uh, let's talk about the third and final stage. Once the house is sold, you want to come back around for the third time. You want to knock on those same doors that you knocked on the two other times and you want to tell them, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I'm so excited. You know, this is Melody. I want to let you know that that house that we saw at the open house last weekend is actually pending. We got eight offers and we got $100,000 over the listed price. Can you believe it? No, I can't believe it either. This market is super, super hot. Um, with those eight offers, we only accepted one, which means there are seven other families out there that need a home and that are looking in this neighborhood and are very motivated to buy. Um, are you thinking of selling your home anytime soon? That's one of the best lines that I have ever heard. Um, just, just let them know, you know, there are seven other buyers. There can only be one buyer for a house. So are you looking to get your home sold? Because these people are actively looking in your neighborhood and we've got a hundred thousand dollars over what the sellers were expecting to make. And they're netting that much more money in the equity of their home. So do you want to make money and get to your next step or get to your next chapter, your next journey or whatever that is? So if they say no, that's okay. Okay, go for no, which is something that Tina Call says, and I absolutely love her. Um, so go for no. Most people are going to say no. Probably 90% of people will say no. Um, I've had some people close the door on my face. That's fine. But there are some people that will say yes. Well, you just grab their information and then you follow up with them. Um, drop off a CRM at their front door with a handwritten note. Thank you so much. I loved meeting you. Thank you, you know, for um, taking the time to speak with me. Here's a custom CRM for you with um, some of my marketing material or just set an appointment with them right then and there. If they say, yes, we're thinking of selling our home. Okay, great. Well, um, I would love to come check out your home. Sometimes they'll invite you inside right then and there. I usually just go in. I don't give them any information about what their home is worth while I'm there. I'll just you know, walk through, oh my God, you have such a beautiful home. Yeah, so when can we book the appointment so that I can come back and show you what we do to get homes sold in the fastest amount of time with for the most amount of money with the least amount of hassle? Would Monday work at two o'clock or does Wednesday work at four? So you book the appointment with them, right? So once you book that appointment, obviously that's a listing lead. And hopefully you have the script training and the practice to be able to close that lead. Um, and so if they say no, which again, 90% of the time they will say no, well then at least they saw how aggressive you were while getting their neighbor's house to get sold and they will remember you when it comes down to recommending a realtor that they 
that they like um, and or maybe remember you for their own home sale, right? So if someone is in their friends or family or their sphere of influence and they're thinking of selling a home, they'll most likely say, oh my God, that Melody girl, yeah, she's great. You should have seen the way that she aggressively marketed the Smith's home at 123 Main Street. Um, it's She got eight offers on it and sold for $100,000 over the listed price. And she knocked on our door three times. She invited us to the open house. She invited us to the twilight tour. Um, she took such good care of us. And um, she was very, very aggressive with the way she uh, aggressive and proactive. Hopefully, you know that you're not known as just an aggressive agent, but aggressive and proactive with the way that she got the neighbor's home sold. So, um, you know, they'll recommend you. And that's exactly what you want. Um, and hopefully when it comes down to them wanting to sell, they'll also remember you as well because of all the different steps that you took in order to get in front of them, okay? So that's just my uh, open house kind of three steps to a successful open house. Um, hope you guys got a lot of information out of it and um, would love to have you guys um, come to me with your questions, comment below, hit subscribe and like on the channel. And um, I hope that you will, um, you know, use some of these tips, especially if you're a newer agent and rock your next open house. I'll see you guys soon.